Hey, I'm Frost Drive, and today in Clip Studio Paint, I'm gonna teach you how to use the auto action feature, which is super amazing for doing things once and having the program record it so you never have to do all those steps again. You just set it, forget it, and then you can just do stuff faster. Let's save time and do that. So first up, to find auto action, you just gotta go to Window, Auto Action. See, I already have it checked, and that means it's gonna pop up over here, probably right above your layer palette, okay? And as you can see, Clip Paint Studio already has some like pre-built in recording actions that is pretty cool. We got create toning layer of half tone dots. That's pretty useful because I had to look up how to apply half tones like five times before I finally remembered how to do it. I could have saved myself time and just saw it right there. Then we got make a clipping folder. That would be really handy for everybody who makes a new layer for every single color on a character, which I don't know why you would do that. You can put all your colors on one layer. From It's mostly fine. And then they just have a lot more here, which is pretty cool. You can look through those, but I'm going to show you how to make your own. Down here, we got three little icons. You hit this one, and then it pops up. Auto Action 1, we can rename that. Let's just call it Cran Jerry Boost for right now, okay? Let's say you um, named it wrong. All you got to do is double-click it again to rename it. Let's rename it Get Ready for inking because that's the first example I'm going to show you it's an easy one so we have this auto action and to start recording the steps we just push this red stop sign but there's one thing I want to let you know before we actually start and it's that clip paint studio does not record every single possible action there's some things that it doesn't and that is it doesn't record rearranging of layers if you have a bunch of layers and you're like and you flip them around and stuff, it's it's not gonna record that. And then it's also not gonna record any drawing and not any tool switching. So if you're going brush to bucket to select, uh, that's not gonna record. And also redo and undo, not gonna record. So you just have to, if you wanna redo something, you just actually have to do it again. But keep that in mind because if you forget it, it will be pretty frustrating. So keep that in mind what it does not record. Mostly what it records is executive sort of functions like Anything on a right click, right click on the layers, anything in the menus like edit, filters, all that sort of stuff. Keep it in mind. So I have this doodle right here. And let's say I was actually going to ink this and get ready for inking. Usually what you would do is take your doodle layer, make it light, and then add a new layer, name this one ink. And it's like a tedious steps that's not drawing. You should spend most of your time drawing to get, you know, maximum productivity. So let's just record all these steps one time and then make it an auto action. So on the get ready for inking auto action, I'm just going to highlight it and then push record. Now it's going to be recording most things that I do. Adjust the opacity of the layer to be kind of bright. And then one thing it does record too is renaming of layers. So I would just rename this like uh, sketch. And you can um, scroll into this and you can see what it's recording. You can just make sure that it's recording the steps that you want. A cool thing that it does as well is that this thing adds colors to your layers, which can be useful for organizing. I usually put line art as purple and color layers as green and then uh, like clipping layers as yellow. And I'd waste a lot of time doing that by hand. But guess what? Now it's just auto action to it. And it records custom colors you put in too. That's pretty cool because you can make it aesthetic. So the sketch, I'm gonna make it like a little pastel purple. And then the line art layer, I just put it as ink and I'm gonna put it as a dark purple. Sweet, so what I recorded was change opacity, change the layer name, change palette color, new vector layer, change the layer name, palette color. That could pretty much be done. That's done right there, nice job. By the way, this works on any file or anything, so I'll show you right now. So we got this guy and he's in pain because he's wasting so much time in clip paint doing tedious things that he could just do auto action on. And so now that's a doodle, we're gonna ink it. But instead of doing it by hand, we just go here to get ready for inking and push this play button, get ready. Boom, in one second, all those like seven steps is done. And then I just, boom, right there, get ready to start inking. Now let's move on to something that is useful and really hard to understand. So you only have to follow this once, don't think about all these steps, they're confusing. Just copy it, and then you never have to think about this again. We're gonna add a vibrance filter to clip paint. This is usually something you can only do in Photoshop, and what it basically does is it just ups the saturation on your photo, but doesn't for all the flesh tones. So I have a picture of me right here. I know you can you can do this on art as well, but on a real picture, I just wanted to do it as an example to really show what it does new and I'll type in vibrance filter and then I gotta put stuff after because I already made this. So this is all on one layer and I am recording right now. So first thing you want to do is duplicate this layer twice. Remember to do it 
twice because if you'd only do it once, this is all going to be messed up. Duplicate layer. Duplicate layer. Then make sure you're selected on the top layer and then go to edit, convert brightness to opacity. Then you right click on this layer you just did that to. Then you go to selection from layer, create selection. Then delete this layer because we don't need it. We only used it to make the selection. So we should have two layers still of the same photo. On the top one, right click, layer mask, mask selection. Don't do this top one, the bottom one, mask selection. Then right click it again, new correction layer, hue saturation. And all you gotta do is take saturation, put it to 100. You could actually make three auto actions of this, like a low intensity, medium, and high intensity. That would be pretty useful, but I'm gonna make it at 100. And as you can see, it is recording all these steps it's pretty uh, good to just double check that it's recording the steps. So then we have, you know, these three layers. Then just merge down, apply, merge down. And then make sure to stop recording. Don't forget to push the stop sign. All right, so now we just did a ton of steps on this picture, but you know what? I don't care. I'm just going to close it because I can reopen it and do all those steps again in one second. All right, so here's the original photo again, unedited. Just to show you the difference of the filter, I'm gonna make two layers of it, and on this top layer, I'm just gonna hit Vibrance Filter, and then push the play button. And then boom, it changes the color. So this top one has got the filter, the bottom one doesn't. Look at the difference. It just really makes it pop. This is a really good effect for doing YouTube thumbnails to so just make them pop. A lot of YouTubers actually do this, and it's a little secret to go pa 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 pa. And just like that, that friggin' 12 steps, you don't need to know it anymore, okay? You got it stored. So nice job. Beep, burp, beep, burp. Okay, so while recording this video, I actually thought of another auto action that will be super useful for speeding up your art. So I have this comic page right here, and there's some line art. And there's a trick with line art where you can double the layer and blur it to make your line art look more softer. So let's do that. I'm going to start a new auto action, though, because this takes time and it's tedious. So let's just auto action it to be fast. Call it line art blur, start recording, duplicate layer. It's a, it's a vector layer, by the way, so you have to rasterize it. And then filter, blur, blur strong, maybe do it again. All right, then I'm going to go back to the ink layer again, duplicate it again, because the blur, I just don't see it very good. So I'm just going to double down. Now I have two blurred layers, so I'm just going to click the top one and merge down. So now I only have two ink layers. There's the real ink layer, and then there's the blurred one. And it looks a lot softer. It looks pretty nice. Pretty awesome. <laughs> and that does it for this video, guys. Let me know down in the comments if you have any auto action ideas, and I'll see if I can auto action it up. And make sure to check out the links in the description. It's not promo. I just found some other tutorials about people making stuff about this and stuff you can do. One of them is the VHS effect with the RGB split. And if you auto action that, it's like 20 steps, but we do it once and you're done. So go check that out because it's pretty cool. That's it for this video. I'll see you next time in the next Clip Studio Paint tutorial.